So you want a new video card. You've set your sights on the RTX 4090 and your wife is just screaming at you in the background. I can hear her now. You might as well just go ahead and give up. You're going to be getting a 3060 Ti. And believe me, my dude, I feel your pain because your wife doesn't feel bad for you at all. In fact, she doesn't understand how you could blow so much money on something so useless as a computer or a graphics card to play childish video games. Maybe someone should point out to your wife that you're not the one blowing hundreds and if not thousands of dollars on shoes and purses. Looks like she wants to pick you up, strangle you, and flick you away for good. And that's probably a blessing. If you're a kid, your parents want to ground you forever as they tell you that you're going to be staying on your Switch or your PlayStation 4 indefinitely. A 4090 is definitely not on your parents' budget. Like I said, if you're married, your wife is incredibly angry at this point in time. You might want to hide this from her as it's a pretty big purchase. But in any case, is the 4090 really worth an upgrade if your CPU you is not been upgraded yet, meaning you have a 5950X or earlier. So simply put, do you need a brand new top end CPU like the 7950, 7953D or 13900KS in order to really make it worth it for the 4090? Well, we're going to find out. Before we get started, guys, be sure to subscribe, tap the bell. This way you guys know when I go live or post a new video. And be sure to check out the store, Acrylics, the one and only, right there on the screen, acrylics.com. If you guys want to know what bottlenecking is, I explained that in my previous video. I'll put a link right there at the top of the screen for you guys to click that first to understand what bottlenecking is. With that aside, let's move on to this video, which is do you need an upgraded top end, very expensive CPU in order to get the most out of the 4090? There's a lot of people that don't quite understand understand how the CPU communicates with the GPU. And believe it or not, many people believe that if you're gaming in 4K, there's really going to be no difference in which CPU you're using. This is not the case. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The reason why 4K isn't affected or bottlenecking the CPU is explained in my previous video on what bottlenecking truly is. You should definitely check out that video, but the short form of it in this video is that basically the GPU is taking so long to render the frames, the CPU CPU is not bottleneck. However, with the 4090, it's rendering frames so fast in 4K that the CPU needs to be fast enough in order to keep up with it. And unfortunately, for anybody looking to buy the 4090, having a low-end CPU will hurt you. And it's kind of good and bad at the same time. And the reason I say that is because the GPU is so powerful that you can't get away with just upgrading the GPU this time around. I know it doesn't quite make any sense to you, but just think of it like this. If you're handing a complex paper for a homework assignment to a student and it's very difficult, you're not going to have to hand out any extra work because it's going to take too long to compute. However, if that student is a genius and knocks it off in less than 30 minutes, you are going to be handing out complex paperwork assignments every 30 minutes, which means not only are they harder and longer to write, the student is keeping up with you, which means now the workload is worse than it was at 1080p. So you have to understand this if you're going to be looking to buy the 4090. The difference at 1080p is huge. The difference in quad HD is still pretty big and the difference in 4 4K, yet again, is still pretty big. So let's go over the benchmarks. Let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But please understand that you're going to need the best CPU if you want to squeeze all the power out of the 4090. It's just too damn fast for a mid-range CPU. And that's the reality. So for the first test, we have the Ryzen 5950 with the 4090. I ran all settings on medium, put on AMD FSR, and set it to ultra quality in 1080p. And the results are 230 frames per second. I then went ahead and turned the FSR off and turned it to DLSS onto quality and then ran the test again with the 5950 and the 4090. I got 264 frames per second. Now we run the exact same test with the Intel 13900KS and the 4090. I set it to AMD FSR and ran the test and I got 304 frames per second. Again, with the 13900KS, I ran DLSS on ultra quality and ran that test and it came back 308 frames per second. Now those are the the tests for the FSR and the DLSS, but what about native 1080p with no downsampling or upscaling or none of that mess? So I went ahead and ran the 5950 with the 4090 in 1080p with no upscaling, just plain old 
flat out 1080p and the results 260 frames per second i went ahead and ran the exact same test with the 13900ks just 1080p no upscaling no down sampling and got a whopping 292 frames per second so you guys can see that the difference between the two processors is night and day so i decided i wanted to run the test in quad hd or 1440p so i went ahead and ran that test with the 5950 and the 4090 and i got 250 frames per second seems pretty good right well until i ran the test again with the 13900ks and got 277 frames per second so we're stepping up in resolution and the gpu should be handling more of the computing than the cpu and you can see how much the cpu really is playing a factor with the 4090 due to how fast this gpu is so here we go the moment you've all been waiting for the 4k test a lot of people are out there saying that when you're running 4k it's going to all be dependent on the gpu and that the cpu has absolutely nothing to do with it well let's find out if that's the case i just want to let you guys know that the 3090 and the 5950x cpu combo got 95 frames per second average in modern warfare 2 so with the 5950x and the 4090 we are getting 145 frames per second this is 45 to 55 frames per second more than the 3090 with the 5950x ryzen cpu so here we go with the big finale the intel 13900ks the rtx 4090 can it beat 145 frames per second is it worth it to get a bigger and badder cpu with the 4090 well yes it is because i got 189 frames per second let that sink in almost 200 frames per second in 4k that is crazy so yes the cpu matters that is a 54 frames per second jump in 4k i did the test three times each and got the exact same results within one frame per second of each other this is what's happening the gpu is so incredibly fast that even in 4k you need a very high-end cpu in order to keep up in fact this gpu is so good when the intel 14900ks comes out next year i'm willing to bet it will go over 200 frames per second it is crazy this gpu is insane it's like insane mode all the time there you have it you need the top end cpu to squeeze the most out of the 4090 even in 4k be sure to subscribe tap the bell and stop into the live streams on tiktok youtube twitch or kick anytime to hang out with me fun fact ice pops were invented by an 11 year old by accident in 1905 an 11 year old boy named frank epperson left soda powder and water outside overnight with his wooden spoon still in the cup the mixture had frozen in the chilly nighttime weather and so the epsicle was born he sold that tree around his neighborhood and nearby amusement parks for a very long time and patented the recipe years later when he had children he changed the name to a popsicle because that's what his kids would call their pops concoction the pop sickle it used to be an epsicle pretty crazy right goodbye well you made it to the end of this video it must have been pretty damn good right of course it was hey listen if you enjoyed this one you're definitely gonna enjoy the one that's on the screen right there you can't go wrong trust me i handpicked it just for you and since i handpicked it it would be kind of mean not to check it out right